Here we are. Okay. Are we live? <laughs> are, we live? are we here? We're here. Yep. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. Welcome to Learning with Boom and Fluency. Uh, it's yours truly, Fluency MC. We've got here next to me, DJ Boom Boom is in the room. Boom, how you doing, man? Doing great. Really excited for today. Yeah, I, I get, I get it, I get it, because we have with us Tony Vincent. Uh, you're gonna, if you don't know this man, many of you probably already do know who he is. But if you don't know who he is, or you do know who he is, uh, you're gonna have a great time, I believe, listening to us chat with this incredibly inspiring, innovative teacher. Tony, thank you so much for joining us on Boom and Fluency. My pleasure. It's great to be here. Cool, cool. So, 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 uh, you know, the, the first thing uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, because I'm, I'm also from, from the Midwest. You're, you're out, you're in Iowa. I'm in Paris, France, by the way. And Boom, where are you? I'm in New York. In Brooklyn, New York. So, so we're all over the place. But I'm definitely in 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 a lot of ways kind of a Midwestern guy at heart. Are you are you someone who grew up in in Iowa in the Midwest, or you moved there? Uh, tell us a bit about your background. Yeah, I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, right across the river from where I'm living in Council Bluffs, Iowa, right now. So, uh, as you might imagine, surrounded by cornfields and cows. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. And 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 were you growing up uh, in in Nebraska, someone who thought oh, I definitely got to get out there and teach, or is it something that came to you more incidentally? Or let, tell us about that. Yeah, I was a terrible student. I w I had to take kindergarten twice, and <laughs> it took me a long time to catch on to school. And whoa, 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 whoa. So, take kindergarten twice. Can I did. Know, I was so bad at kindergarten the first time. What, what, that, what does that mean? What is that? About? <laughs> well, my birthday's in August. So I had just turned five. I started kindergarten. I had a teacher that was terrible. She sat me in the back of the room. At, I mean, even, even as a five-year-old, I knew she just wanted nothing to do with me because I didn't, I wouldn't, I wasn't prepared for school. I didn't know my colors. I clearly remember not being able to count past 39. A, they had a parent <laughs> but, volunteer but pull me out in the heart. But you were <laughs> cognizant of something about her. So you kind of already had figured out something about education. Yeah, you knew she was I a, didn't. You knew she was I a bad didn't teacher. like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And luckily, you know, the teacher across the hall, Mrs. Riley, who wore so many bracelets on her arms. They, every time she moved, you could just hear them all crashing all the time. And so I got to be in her class the next year and you know, I did, I did a little better, <laughs> but okay, cool. uh, it, it took me a few years, but then by the time I was in sixth grade, that's when I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I ended up liking helping other kids in class and Hmm. Since sixth grade, I felt like I was in teacher's college, like just studying every teacher. Like, I'm going to be a teacher. So let me let me see what good teachers do and what bad teachers do. And I just made mental notes the whole time yeah. and until I went to college and then became a fifth grade teacher. Ooh, um, do you remember, Tony, uh, like five top uh, things that good uh, teachers do and five uh, bad things that bad teachers <laughs> do? <laughs> well, I don't have you know, the, the list all delineated. I, sh I should do that sometime. But, you know, uh, one of my favorite teachers ended up being my high school Latin teacher. You know, I really didn't have that much interest in Latin, but she was such a good mm. teacher. I took four years of it. And... What, what made her so good was that she kind of taught us like we were elementary kids. She said, you know, a class period is 50 minutes, but we won't do anything that, that takes longer than half that. So well, she always had us set up with two different activities and uh, she, she made up songs, she made up raps to help us remember declensions and she told stories. She just kept us really interested and yeah, that, that's, that's what I want. She did game shows and things I brought into, into my fifth grade classroom. And then, you know, things that, that my teachers didn't do. I mean, I, my fifth, my own fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Neiman, the screaming demon, uh, <laughs> screaming at your class. That's, uh, that, that's, that's did, one did no, no. Your Latin, did your Latin teacher write that rhyme about about? Uh, <laughs> no, that's what that's what we called that. As fifth graders, we wrote that rhyme because. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and I remember we had to do like popcorn reading. We had social studies in the afternoon and it was like, I, I, all I wanted to do was take a nap, but we had to each take turns reading a paragraph in the book and, and then doing a worksheet. And, you know, like, oh, I don't want to teach that way. So, so <laughs> those, those are some of the things that I noted. <laughs> Oh, that's, no, that's, that's awesome. But, yeah, so but, but, what were the, the milestones then of your uh, educator's uh, career? And what are the most exciting things that you are working on right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well, I became a fifth grade teacher in 1998. And that same year, I did my master's degree in an induction program. So it's a year I don't remember too well. <laughs> but what I what I do know is that we had uh, two really old Macs. They were old for back then in the classroom, and we had a computer lab. And I, I just loved what my kids could do with that. I maxed out my credit card my first year of teaching to buy myself a laptop because there were no laptops in the building. Schools didn't provide them to teachers. But I knew that if I had my own computer and then if I had a projector, like, oh, I could make these, this something called PowerPoint and you can make your own slides and <laughs> instead yeah. of having to write on the overhead projector. And so then I figured out how to make a class website in, in the late 90s, which was, you know, there we did certainly did not have the tools we had today. And, mm. uh, and, and then one of the, one of the cool things we did, we, well, we ended up naming our, our class website Planet Fifth because back then planetfifth.com was available. Don't go there now. I don't know what's there. <laughs> but but uh, we had Planet Fifth. And then my favorite section was, was a part called uh, the Daily Planet, where every day one of my students was the roving reporter and their job was to take pictures. And then they actually had extra homework, but they didn't mind. They wrote an article about our learning that day. And then Super the next cool. morning... They conferenced with me. I combined the pictures and the words and put it up on our site today. You'd call it a blog. Back then, it was a lot of work for me, but I copy, paste, and, and post that. Uh, so we, we had a log of everything we were doing every day. And this is before Google, too. So uh, if you go to Yahoo Please. and you wouldn't search, you instead you would go to education, K-12, elementary classrooms and there were like two or three of ours and so planet fifth was one of those wow. so that's how i started connecting with teachers is that they would find me through Amazing. through yahoo through my website and then they would see what we were doing in my classroom and then they would have questions about it like oh we saw that you're doing this cool turkey carving thing for thanksgiving can you tell us more about it or your students said uh, said you were making some choose your own adventure stories do you have that template and so a lot of my communication with teachers came through through uh, through email and i've made connections mm. I, I i saved so many of those emails from years ago because now those same teachers are ones that i've connected to through twitter uh so it's it's been tons of fun we we uh, let's see more about my career i teach i taught fifth grade for six years then i became my school's tech coach and and that was in 2005 and we had one of the very first podcasts from an elementary school when yeah. apple started itunes and had a podcast section they had exactly two podcasts that were k-12 and uh, ours was called radio willow web was one of them because I loved Big the kids up. could create these, these podcasts. We divided them up into segments and we really thought about what would listeners want to hear and what do we have mm -hmm. to offer and how can we connect that to what we're learning now? So it, so it turned out so great. It was the model for lots of podcasts going forward. So uh, cool. Yeah. We, uh, oh, and back when I was teaching fifth grade, I wanted a computer for every kid, but you know, max out my credit card just to get one laptop. Like that just wasn't there. There wasn't one-to-one -one technology, but there there was something called Palm Pilots, which were little oh, handheld computers yeah. with a stylus. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. my district did. They were willing to fork over five hundred dollars for for each one to give uh, every kid in my class a Palm Pilot to try out to see what what would work and. I know it, it, it sounds silly, but we had little apps back then. We didn't call them apps. We called them programs or applications. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they could do some, uh, some stop motion animation. They could definitely do writing. We had little keyboards that attached. So I made a section of Planet Fifth called Learning in Hand because we were using these Palm Pilots. 
And mm -hmm. I swear I told teachers like, here's what we're doing with these Palm Pilots. I know it sounds crazy that we, that every kid has a little tiny computer, but hear me out. We were doing some pretty cool stuff. And then I started kind of a blog on there. So, oh, here's another activity we did. Oh, here's something new. And, and teachers that were also getting into this one-to-one, -one, particularly with Palm Pilots, mm -hmm. would come to Learning in Hand to, to get advice. And uh, then they started to be asked to speak at conferences and put on workshops. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, and that's really kind of led to what I do today. Uh, I've I've left regular teaching. I actually went back to teach fifth grade during the 2018, 2019 school year. And now, and now I'm back to being self-employed. And, and my number one mission is to support teachers, do what I can mm. to mm. help them be more awesome. So I love teaching kids, but even more, I love helping adults teach kids. Yeah, because you can you can reach so many more kids and, and it can benefit from all that you learn and you've done. Uh, Tony, you are like... I, uh, <laughs> basically boom i don't know if you're feeling like i don't want to say anything i just want to let tony just keep talking about all this like, but but i mean you are like you are like proto everything man you're like proto new media proto itunes uh pro, 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 proto uh podcasts website know, proto pages and and blogs and yeah all well, yeah man like you you put in all that work man you know and and it's just wow I, I, amazing. I, I didn't know this much about you. I, I see what you're doing now with these tools and, and how effortlessly you engage uh, learners. But also, like you said, you, you, you're you passionate about helping teachers help learners. I see that uh, everywhere I look that you're doing now. But I didn't know this background story. Boom. Did you know this? Did you know that he was a 90s? Like, and when, like it's not dating me. I had the Palm Pilot too, but I was just kind of sitting with it in my hand. Like, oh, what am I going to do with this? Meanwhile, you were you were using it with students, you know, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that's, that's absolutely, you know, it always makes sense like to look back into the history and then you're like, Oh, now that like what's happening now makes a lot of sense. So Tony, uh, tell us more about what's happening now. Uh, it's so awesome that you are supporting, uh, educators. What are the most, um, exciting things that you see that people might be missing uh, you mm. know, educators might be missing talking tools, you know, or, uh, you know, technologists like uh, what are the things that you are the most excited about and that you are working with? Yeah, well, I um, I started uh, teaching some online workshops. Uh, we use Google Classroom as the platform and it, the timing was probably pretty good because it was pre-pandemic, but I would gather a group of teachers together in Google Classroom and we would use Flipgrid to communicate. Everything was asynchronous, but we felt like a group because mm. we'd share each other's work, we'd comment on it. And uh, that, that's been a good way for me to work with teachers over a few weeks period of time and show them some cool stuff, build up their skills and um, create a network of learners. Uh, and then really, I just get the best compliments that are saying that, that the way I run my classes is just such a great example for how to include that any kind of interactivity uh, with with any kind of students, whether it's teacher to teacher or teacher to student. Uh, seeing that, you know, even even if you're learning through screens, you can still have a a rich conversation and you can still learn from each other sometimes in maybe even better ways because you have time to be thoughtful and to mm -hmm. look through each other's work, you know, and that, that's something that people have teachers definitely figured out in the last two years now is, yeah, we can do, we can do things through a screen, but that's because they were forced to. <laughs> and previous to that, I think that that was, that was a little, little, uh, um, a little less common. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. My 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 favorite my passion project I think I think everything I've done in my life has built up to this, <laughs> and it's a it, it's a series of digital drawing challenges that I call Shapegrams. So Shapegrams, shape I was I was checking them out. I was checking those out. Really? Yeah. So at Shapegrams.com, there I now just published my sixtieth one of these. But uh, what I wanted to do again, I wanted to help teachers and students, and that. My year back in the classroom for 2018, 2019, I mean, I knew this, but now I, now, I, now I know it again, is that teachers don't have enough time. 
There's not enough time to prepare the kind of lessons they want. There's not enough mm. time to search out resources. There's just, there's, there's, the workload is immense. And mm. so if there, is there one, one way that I could maybe take some of that workload off and <clears throat> give students something that I think will, would be amazing for them to learn. And what I had to offer really is uh, working with drawing tools. And so the drawing challenges are packaged inside of Google Drawings. And I host a little video that uh, I think is pretty fun. They're filled with puns and jokes, but also uh, quality instruction. I screencast and I show how I combine shapes and overlap shapes and use tools and techniques to draw different things. The first one's this house mm -hmm. that you combine just a few shapes together. The next one's this face. The next one is an ice cream cone. And each one gets a little harder and introduces a new skill. So all teachers have to do is give students the link to make a copy of this document. And then students can watch the video. They can get the tips and they mm -hmm. can try out the drawings. And then I encourage students, once they've drawn the basic, they've recreated what's there because you know, it takes problem solving to, to recognize what shape is there and how right. it, things that overlap, then to take what they've done and put their own personal spin on it, to customize it, to change the colors, to add a hat, you know, to, to, to yeah. make it their own. And then uh, teachers are using these in you know, writing activities. They often connect it to math, but really it's giving students these digital skills that then they can apply when it's time to I, I did shape grams with my my own fifth graders during the 2018 2019 school year and man i tell you what they, they could draw anything from scratch we're learning about uh the water cycle they could they could start a new document and without even bringing in clip art they could draw the entire water cycle they could make a circular wow. arrow they could draw the clouds they could do the raindrops and uh, my students really enjoyed this so much that we'd have we had a really rainy year in Iowa that year. We had a lot of indoor recesses. And I had this group of kids that in, indoor recess, they'd open up their Chromebooks and they all work collaboratively on this Google slideshow where they just made different pieces of artwork, cartoon characters, their own characters. I even had a group that went through and they traced the every state in the United States to make their own editable map. It was neat to see what they what they did and then how they use their skills in different projects and, and how to take action. I had a, a, a group that studied uh, animal abuse and they were just they were mortified to find out that in Iowa, animal abuse is uh, is just a misdemeanor where in most states it's a felony and they wanted to change that. So they started a petition and they use their drawing skills that if you sign the petition, they made this sticker that says, uh, stop animal abuse, make it a felony. And they had their own picture and logo on there. And it just lots of examples of, of how they can apply these skills, uh, in, in, into, uh, into their projects. And then again, the problem solving skills and my kids could, knew their way around Google slides, like, like nothing else and all the Google tools because the menus are similar and all that. But again, I, I have such a fun time making, making these shape grams. And I know kids for the most part, they have a fun time, but the, the problem is that it's a challenge and it gets harder and harder. So mm. I also include a growth mindset kind of corny message at the end, because you know, you keep trying or, <laughs> and, yeah. If you, if you keep going, anything is popsicle when they're drawing an ice cream cone, just to <laughs> give, give them that extra push that, you know, this is not going to be easy, but you learn through, through, uh, you grow by taking on challenges. <laughs> uh, you're describing these projects. I'm like trying to count all the different things that they're learning on like every different level. It's impossible. Like you're, you're mentioning them, like at the same time, like, oh my God, but they're learning this and they're learning that. Yeah. And it's like, just. Wow. And you're talking about fifth graders, you know, it's yeah. so, so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Me and boom, uh, uh, me and uh, me, boom. And, <laughs> and Jace, we have me this. Boom, <laughs> you boom. <laughs> me boom too. You boom too. You boom, boom, boom yeah. too. We have this vision of uh, bringing uh, the world's, uh, most inspiring, active, and innovative thousand educators together in a DAO. And mm. uh, 
collaborate and build together and kind of amplify each other's superpowers because you know someone has a product someone has audience someone has design mm -hmm. skills someone mm -hmm. has marketing skills um so and it feels like shape grams is such a such mm -hmm. a cool uh, you know such a cool concept how do you see the development of this you know uh project like what is your wildest dream with it and i'm asking because i want to think how can we help to actually you know bring it to the world and help mm. you bring it to the place where you want to see it yeah you know i when i started i didn't dream that i would have 60 60 of them or i thought i'd be bored of it by now <laughs> but yeah. uh, after after a couple of years i i uh, i keep going and and I, and I guess I should say with Shapegrams, the, the first four are free and they, they learn lots. And then because it's such a time investment, um, mm. I, I try to make it super cheap for teachers. $35 a year gets you everything else. Like you get access to all 60 and anything new I put out. Uh, but I guess my, a vision that, that I kind of have is that it's beyond Shapegrams, but I love this format of a, a teacher being able to give students a document and inside there is a is a video by the ex by an expert in some content area that takes them along a journey that helps them create something and the document also has tools and support all in it so that mm. uh, students can can kind of learn in a, in a self-paced way in an interesting way and from somebody who knows what they're talking about, you know? But I yeah. love that because what you're talking about is that but there's so much room to create. It's like, there's the inspiration, but it's like, it, it's right into the creating. It's not like, you know, watching some video and, you know, what would you maybe, you know what I mean? Like it's not, in this disc, it's a very connected way uh, to, to get students off and running. Yeah. And that's where, you know, I could, as a teacher, you can find a YouTube video about anything, but it's not oh, made necessarily for kids. It's, it's, it's not, there's not a product necessarily that's the end there. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I learn from YouTube every day how to do something, but they're right. not, they're not holding my hand the way that, that it may need to be held in order to mm -hmm. get the skills and create something. Yeah, that's a great, that's, that's a great idea. I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. That. And the, the fact yeah. that it's uh, kind of um, is so helpful for both the parents and the kids and the educators, teachers who can just take it as like kind of their class materials. Yeah. And use mm. the experts uh, kind of putting together these courses uh, so mm. that they kind of have this uh, expert as a and a real kind of a co-teacher yeah uh from all over the world and like we can keep uh, adding this uh, things that we ourselves can be using in classrooms but also knowing these people yeah uh, mm, uh, so that mm. like uh, potential for a great uh, kind of uh, worldwide collaboration that sounds well, cool. well talk, yeah. talk about a great you know take on like the living textbook or whatever i mean it wasn't that long ago where it was like you know go to the library get an encyclopedia and like you know look up this person because this person's going to inspire you with you know, what they did like we are so far but you know even today you see people still kind of in that old frame of mind right like you know go to wikipedia and research this you know come on, you know, so what you're talking about, it, it just makes so much sense. Cause it's like, we have the tools for that, you know? Um, and it's just like, wow, that's, that's very cool. I, I can, I can really, really see. And the other thing I just want to throw in because um, I was actually on Ed Crunch today talking about this, uh, shout out to Ed Crunch in, in Moscow, but like we were talking about, um, you know, outside the classroom, you know, how many, how many hours are kids engaged in, in learning things that will connect back to the classroom. And that's such a huge thing. That's like what inspired me to make the materials I make with, with raps. Cause it was like, okay. And it's the, the idea of the flipped classroom, you know? So like if my students before they come to class can like engage in, in these raps and come to class, like, Oh, we know all this English. Now we can do the activities. It's also like what you're saying. It's like, how, how many hours are you, you know? And also who are you? You're a great teacher. Fine. You're helping them, but you're not that expert you're talking about. So like, if the students are out there in this way, getting all this stuff outside the classroom, uh, those are incredibly important minutes and hours, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not the same thing as assigning homework. If they get hooked on it and they get into it, then it's, it's just so valuable. 
Yeah. Or even in class. I mean, that, that frees up the teacher to do, to work with small groups or to, to do whatever, True. whatever a teacher may need to do yeah. while the kids are, 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 you know, on their computers or, le- you know, learn, learning rap from you. Like, you know, I, I certainly couldn't teach that, but it'd be amazing if, if my students learn how to, mm. how to compose things from mm. somebody who's done it and is so good at mm. it. Mm-hmm. See, and that's Great the good thing. <laughs> Great no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. And that's the that's the whole. You know, it's funny when when teachers come to me and uh, they say like, "Oh, I, you know, fluency. I love what you do, but I could never use your materials. Why? Because I don't rap." And I was thinking, that's so interesting because it's like, you know, you don't have to rap. You're bringing me in. You no, know? like like when yeah. I bring when I bring in videos of you know clips from movies. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be the actor. Right, I'm bringing in something. I'm bringing in someone, so I, I think that that obviously should be, you know, it should be the past, present, and future. But I think for many people, it's still the future. But I think it's it's coming, right? Where it's like, hey, you know, it's not about just you, the teacher, and the textbook, right? We can bring in all this stuff, but instead of just clicking on a YouTube video, how about something more organized, more structured, more meaningful? And that's what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, well they, it's just been at the back of my head and now it's, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> fun to talk it's about it because happen, it, it's, it's, but, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, because it's, it's so like, it's so, we all always almost, uh, you know, go, just go with our intuition and we just do something because it feels right, mm. you know, and we put all our love and attention and uh, what Quincy Jones calls ass power when you just like sit and do it, you know, into it. Um, but without necessarily thinking, oh, like, what, what is the, the biggest, like, picture? Where do I want to take this? Also, I think in a way, because, you know, it's a little bit overwhelming to think about these things, because, like, w- what do you know? There, there's so much that's going into it. And then when you add marketing and scale and all this kind of businessy yeah. things, yeah, it gets overwhelming. But mm. our... Uh, ideas that getting together again combining superpowers we can actually mm. uh do think about this and actually do see the the progress and kind of support each other uh mm. going to places that otherwise we might not even kind of dare to mm. go mm. Mm. Eg- exactly i'm just now my 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 brain is my brain is 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 racing with with ideas because you know i i love big ideas but i'm also my brain just goes to the practical all the time like oh but what can you actually accomplish and i mm, need to mm. i need to consider the big ideas more often so well it's yeah. both i mean you gotta be you gotta be realistic but like what when, when you said what you said before like you know you you love teaching but you love even more like getting getting to helping teachers teach like that's the reach when you teach that's like when you see what you've got as as someone who creates content and somebody who has creative ideas like you, you know and if you can be that person who creates and also has good relationships with teachers it's like you feel like oh we can help so many other kids you know and like that that's really important but then of course reality sets in okay what about the budget what about the marketing so that's what you know boom is talking about like you know that that that's our mission you know if we can work as a collective and like use our superpowers it's like why should we wait for that to get out let's get it out meanwhile you know uh my man over here has a has a book for teachers that would really change their lives you know for you know middle school kids let's get that book out there right now you know what i mean like let, let's let's figure out how we can get all this great stuff out uh you know more easily into more people yeah yeah Totally. And the technology that the the reason why we are so excited is because Web3, uh, you know, tokenization, NFTs, DAO, uh, mm. all these decentralized uh, autonomous uh, yes, structures that allow people to uh, now get together and have a stake yeah, with like live equity uh, model, have uh, actually stake and collaborate and not mm-hmm. in a way that, oh, I will like retweet, uh, you know, uh, the information about your book. No, let's actually uh, collaborate so that we both can benefit uh, from, uh, you know, the 
profit and whatever comes of it, uh, be it, mm. you know, monetary or tokenized or in terms of the audience, etc. cetera. Mm. Yeah, as mm. soon as we kind of come together and decide to do things, then we can actually share this. And it's so, it's so cool for us to see it and think that this can mm. be now made not like institution to institution collaboration. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but actually human to human, innovative teacher to innovative teacher. That's right. Because then the sky is the limit in a way, you know, there's no rules and no limitations to mm. what can be done uh, this this way. It's kind of a little bit uh, changing the education system, mm. uh, like from within without asking, you know, for the permission, because this yeah. was changing with the hands of educators, you know, the people that are actually creating, not the administrative, uh, uh, you know, administrators, mm. Uh, mm. but and, the and, actual- and, and, and it's not that that's so new, like listening to Tony talk about like what he was doing in the 90s and everything else. I think what's changing and for wow, for the better, like really for the better is an opportunity, a window where we can maybe, you know, get off of uh, certain company social media platforms. Right. And, and you know, and, and actually, you know, have this new chance to get together like the things that uh, Boom is talking about with Web3, right? I think I think we have this this great opportunity right now. And that's why we're so excited and, and, and why we're here with you now, right? Is that, you know, it's 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 not so much that like it's a new notion to like, you know, collaborate and 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 sub- subvert the system. <laughs> like, you know, try to like, you know, uh, uh, avoid the the crappy corporate crap out there and and the politics right but i think i think you know things go in cycles and we're, we're sort of at a at a place right where maybe we have a chance to organize and 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 make progress in this way yeah and i i just say oh, uh, the the door being open to a classroom in the kinds of lessons that teachers offer their kids but in yeah, just in an, in an equitable way that everybody yeah. can have access to it and it's quality instruction and, and I, you know, and I just, whatever can support teachers to help them do their jobs because their jobs are uh, pretty much impossible to do everything that, that they mm. need to do. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, are you back to sort of your day-to-day stuff? Like, are you, are you, you said you're doing some uh, teacher training at the moment? Yeah, I uh, well, I offer online workshops. So I have one called Classy Graphics, which uh, goes for six weeks, and uh, that's that's wrapping up soon. And then I, I offer offer about four of these classes a year. I have a video one and a creations one, and I'm coming up with I think a, a website one here soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then really, kind of my work is is also often kind of random, just a school district or a conference says, Hey, can you come speak? And Mm. I have a a list of topics and then I always keep uh, things updated and stuff. And a lot of, a lot of my work happens in the summer and I used to, Mm. used to Mm. travel by plane a lot. And now a lot of it is online and and that's, that's, that's a okay with me. I mean, I like, I like connecting in person. It's much better, but Mm. I also like just being able to come down to my basement and, uh, Sure. <laughs> not have to not have to get on a plane and and leave my family because I I have yeah, twins that yeah. just turned nine yesterday they're in third Ooh, grade congratulations uh, and yeah. <laughs> thanks so my my mornings are all about getting them to school and starting their day mm-hmm. off right and yeah. uh, and they they oh, actually cool. did uh, did second grade virtually last year so yeah. they it's, they were the three of us stayed. Stayed home all day. I sat between them and uh, their teacher had a hybrid class. So she had some virtual students and some students, students in person. And, and that's where I, where, where I really got to kind of see how online learning can happen for, for young kids, for second grade. We're not, we're not happening. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And and teachers who are just thrown into this, like, wow, overnight. Uh, Tony, I'm I'm really curious, the teachers that you train, you're talking about these different uh, things you're offering. Is, is there anything that you'd say is most uh, popular or common, like concerns, uh, areas where teachers feel they need, the most training or they need your help the most 
is it is it a lot of different things or is it are yeah, no, I, I think i think too i mean the the and it's the, the 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 name of the of the class um classy graphics and then there's also classy videos but in, in particular the graphics that i'm doing now is it just showing um how how to arrange things onto a slide or into a document how to consider your audience and having that empathy and uh, making it so it could be filled in digitally and uh, mm. choosing colors and images that illustrate what you're talking about and and in the end making it look nice but if it looks it, it look nice and it's functional then they have something they can bring into the classroom and no one's mm. ever taught teachers that there's not there's not a there's not any kind of teacher certification class for that is just, Oh, here, make a document, make a slideshow. And, you know, right. they can, they can take a template and go with it, but uh, to, to really dig deep and then to get some resources that they can do all this for free. We do it all in Google slides and Google drawings so that it's completely accessible to them. And then uh, I've actually had kids take this class alongside uh, the adults in the class because and, and, kind of like shape grant. Prep, prep the teachers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that the, the teachers just come away with so many things that they just had never taught, but is really helpful to have. And, and I'm all self-taught with those things, but since mm -hmm. becoming a teacher, I've always wanted to make my own materials because you, know, you can, I can personalize them. I can make them fit together in a series. Uh, mm -hmm. I can change them when I need to. So I, I like putting my own spin on everything. <laughs> so uh, I end up reinventing the wheel way too much, way more than I should, but I'm also very invested in the things that I make and it makes me more excited to use them in an education setting. So, th so that happens with the, with the teachers in my classes and then the same thing with videos. Uh, nobody's taught, taught teachers really how to do and quality instruction through video and how to make their videos engaging and, and mm. how to mm. you know, just simple tweaks to make sure that your camera is in the right spot and the lighting ooh, sort ooh, of things that, that can I, make I, a I difference. Got, I, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt you here because boom. Please. Wow. I know, I know what you're thinking. Boom. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, my company, uh, Relevant, yeah, is now uh, partnering with. Uh, mm -hmm, there is a wonderful service for video presentation. It's by yeah. Phil Rubin, who is the yeah. former Evernote founder. Yeah. So my co-founder is Relevant. Is Troy Malone, who helped grow Evernote to 200 million users. And now we are developing this education platform that actually, like, the idea is you put people into small groups uh, with the same kind of goal, and then every day they get an instruction but they also get to do things like they get to act immediately on the knowledge that they received so the challenge that we are putting together now is called uh, you look great on video that teaches people exactly that how Ooh. to you know uh present uh, light sound uh, just uh, you know presentation uh, uh, using technology and all this there like should be a teacher a teacher subgroup there should be like an totally elementary there. school yeah. teacher we should, yeah. we should totally collaborate on that because yeah, yeah well, this will be so cool to like put together the you know mm -hmm. the little ideas and and tips that we have so yeah and i want to say that uh, tony what you're doing is so important because when we say, when we speak about, you know, kind of uh, educators liberation and, uh, you know, uh, earning exactly from the materials that they create, we have to liber liberate them from the, you know, these publishers, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, the mindset is, oh, but how do I, you know, create my own book? How do I create my own, like, mm -hmm. own online lesson course, etc.? Yeah, it all requires design. So you basically teaching educators the basics of design that you learned yourself that work for yeah. you. I think this so is important, so important, important yeah. and such, such an important kind of basic first step for them to feel that, wow, I can actually be my own, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, publisher, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, creative uh, team uh, with like a little bit of, uh, you know, Tony's support. I can do it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a, yeah. That's, Things that they they never thought they could do. They were like, exactly. oh, I have to go to teachers, pay teachers to buy this, or I've got to use what the textbook yeah. comes with. When they're like, oh, I can I can make this myself. And there are so mm-hmm. many shortcuts and things that you know over the years. I wish uh, you know I wish I could go back in time and take this class myself so I could <laughs> <laughs> save save me uh, lots of hours trying to figure these things out. <laughs> but it, it also helps them see quality materials and identify it. If they know what what goes into good design, they can then say, oh, that thing I see that everybody's using on Teachers Pay Teachers or wherever, maybe that's not as well designed as I thought. And maybe that's not worth the $5.99 mm-hmm. I was about to pay for it. <laughs> That's yeah. empowering, man. It's so empowering. Yeah. Oh, and actually, when I look at all, uh, even the like, even the best uh, educators with a uh, you know already large following, etc. So often, I look at the the design of their materials from the kind of modern, you know, consumer kind of Apple standard, and it sucks. <laughs> And it's so simple <laughs> that it sucks because, like, a little, little knowledge, little tricks, like knowing some basics, and it will look so much better. And then uh, people will be attracted to it so much more on a on a much larger scale. Because in a way, uh, a lot of people are spoiled. You know, they kind of they don't even look beyond the kind of cover if the cover is not standing up to these mm, kind of mm, standards mm. of the, you know, apps and, and uh, fancy uh, things that they're using that have, you know, millions of dollars behind it. Yeah. But actually, if you think about it, what are the key kind of elements, you know, fonts, uh, colors, uh, good light for videos, etc. Right, these right. are all super accessible, easy things to, to have. And then with uh, all the f- new phones, etc., like your production quality, you don't need uh, all this money to create really, you know, mm-hmm. beautifully looking products. Yeah. Yeah. And for kids, but I guess I and should say kids, that you, you don't have to, I mean, to, to do this stuff doesn't mean you don't, to be a good teacher, you don't have to have this design sense and you don't have to mm. use all this, but could be a good teacher and have that going for you. Then you, then you have boosted your communication and mm. engagement even more. And I think, and you connect so much with, with the learners who are, of course, one step ahead with a lot of these things themselves. So that's that's also a huge thing. So if you get into it, not because, oh, I want to be down with my students in some fake way, right? But you, you know, you start to feel more like I know what's going on <laughs> these tools too, then that that's gonna help your rapport with your students. Yeah. True story. Uh, I have a question. With you having your own kids and and uh, helping so many teachers and um, you know and and students and with us being able to now talk to you know the most inspiring educators, this uh, uh, idea of uh, future skills keeps coming up because mm. what are we actually preparing our kids for? The world that we have no idea what will happen there. Yeah, with all the uh, in kind of progress that is going so much faster with each year so but at the same time it feels like there are some like basic principles some key future skills that we should be teaching now that the kids will definitely need no matter like where it's all going and which professions will be disrupted etc so what is your idea of the most essential future skills well, I, th- I think just being able to to solve problems. <laughs> uh, I, I just I think it's funny. I, I am techie, so I've had experience with tech, but I'm I'm not. You know, I've I've never put together my own computer. But it's funny. I'll have friends that say, "Oh, can you? Um, I can't hook up my Chromebook to this wireless printer." And I'm like, well, I I don't have a I have Chromebook that uh, I've never done that before, but. I can, I can try, I can figure, I can take problem solving steps. I can fig- click around, I can use a YouTube video and stuff. And, uh, mm. and it just makes me think, okay, well, uh, how do we get those skills to somebody that, to get the attitude that I have? Like, all right, I, I, yeah. I haven't done this before, but I've done attitude. similar things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, and I think communication skills, you know, so many, so many problems in the world come down to communication and, and not communicating accurately or well. 
And, uh, and I also think this probably comes from the, the school my kids go to and that I, that I taught at a couple of years ago, um, being an international baccalaureate school where we really believe in taking action, learning about something, figuring out what we care about it and taking action to make a difference with, with that. So <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> do things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what it was all about. <laughs> and not because somebody tells you to do it, but because you just feel it from within. How can we get students? That's the attitude, the attitude. Like it's not a special person with a special skill set or whatever that can feel like, oh, okay, I'm ready to solve that problem. It's 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 it has to do with like their 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 feelings from within. Yeah. And, and, and I, I don't know, it seems like, you know, with, 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 with artificial intelligence being able to hopefully do some of the really boring things that we might be <laughs> doing yeah. and, you know, and maybe they, you know, an AI can take and make a beautiful graphic for us, but there's still humans are going to have to know how to, to, how to verify information, mm. whether you can't, you're, you know, <laughs> Any anybody and any AI can have some some bias in it. So ver verifying and bringing mm. artistry, you know, mm. bringing 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 personality into into our work, um, mm. I think is is also an important skill. Beautiful. I just thought of one that I have never thought before. I don't think telling your personal story. Like no algorithm or AI mm, mm, tell mm, your yeah. story. And well, stories. So Tony's, Tony's, Tony's a story guy, man. Tony's a story totally. guy. Yeah, yeah. That's another one. Mm. Beautiful. Um, in the festival, in the Edgeverse, uh, we had this uh, another idea that, you know, because we reach out to the most inspiring educators, yeah, uh, to a lot of teachers, they seem like, oh, you guys have it all figured out, you know, you probably know what you're doing, etc. We know, yes, that uh, we face so many challenges every day, and it's it's a constant kind of, you know, uh, constant battle of figuring things out. So the question is, uh, and kind of getting a little vulnerable here, yeah. What are the things that you can't figure out right now and that mm. don't make sense and that you wish you knew uh, how to put together or like figure out, but this is just, uh, you know, stressful, confusing and overwhelming <laughs> to you as educator? Well, just I've I took a, a short introduction to Adobe uh, Character Animator mm. and and I've I've wanted to you know, this cartoon version of me. I've want I I love cartoons. I think making cartoons would be so fun. So mm. I you know I pay Adobe a ton of money every month to have all their apps. I'm like I want to learn this, and it's it, it's something I watch YouTube videos. I use all the resources I can, and I'm I still can't. I can't get it. I can't get it. Why do you so, think? Do you, have any, do you have any insight into why? Because I have a feeling I, I, I whatever you're going to say, I'm going to relate to. <laughs> why I can't get it? I, it, it doesn't work the way I expect. So I'm, I'm gonna, ha I have to like, keep telling myself, put yourself in Adobe shoes. If you are going to make an app that's going to, to make a character, what are some of the things they have to consider? Then maybe that. Oh, so, I, so I'm having empathy for my, for their empathy for me to figure out how it goes. And I, I, uh, it's just, it's it's a lot of steps. It's it's a it's a complicated thing. But I feel like if I figure this out, I'm going to have a skill that I'll be proud of, and that mm -hmm. I can put to yeah. use, and a skill that not everybody can do because right now I can't do it. So you haven't given up. You're 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 gonna keep. You're no, gonna no. I still have the files on my desktop haunting me every day, and I, <laughs> I I put it aside for the last week. But it's right there on my desktop, saying okay. Tony. So it's a challenge you intend to meet. <laughs> yes, yes, I I do intend to meet it, but it might. It, and it, actually, this challenge started uh, back in 2001 when I tried to learn uh, Adobe Flash. Uh, oh, cause it, okay. it's all built on, on top of that. And I remember I made like this, this superhero rabbit go across the screen and I was so excited. And then <laughs> the school district 
called me up and said, Tony, we're thinking of doing a pilot project with Palm Pilots. Would you be interested? And I'm like, oh, that sounds great. I <laughs> closed Adobe Flash and then never touched it again because I had thank another goodness. There thing a lot of, to, there are a lot of, to focus of, on. There are a lot of teachers that thank you for that. Now that we know where yeah. you where you went with uh, the projects with, with your students. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm oh. picking it back up in a way again, but uh, I, it's, it's a slog. It, 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 and and I, I do like being in this world because I know that's what so many of the teachers and students that I try to reach, what they feel with with tools that I think like, oh, gosh, oh, yeah. I, I know this inside now. Why aren't you getting it? I'm like, okay. Mm, because mm. I'm not putting myself in their shoes. And now I kind of that, am. That's a huge one. Talk about a skill, Boom. You refer to skills that no matter what's coming next, people have to have. Put, that putting, you know, what do you call it? empathy, putting, putting people, putting, ooh, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. But wow, when it comes to like, 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 like uh, stuff with tech, I think that that's huge. I mean, as a, as a language teacher, right, it's, it's tantamount to like, you know, the, the language teacher that doesn't learn another language, right? <laughs> so they never know what it's like to be, you know, you can go through, yeah. uh, we we're talking this talking about this with a shout out to, to Merrick Speakadelic, right? We're talking to Merrick about this at Eduverse, right? Where he's taking, you know, it, 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 taking, taking another language, like made him like really get why <laughs> teacher training courses when you're just doing it all in English never worked for people because they, 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 they were never really in the student's shoes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah so that's the story. Uh, reason I'm asking is also uh, because I want to leverage the power of the community. And then now anyone who's watching this recorded, yeah, might circle back to Tony and say, hey, I know actually this awesome new program, yeah, or, you know, this awesome uh, person on like one of the, you know, online courses, platforms, uh, Skillshare that teaches it in a way that makes it super clear and like you <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. From my yeah, end, that, that makes me think, why, why, why have I not like tweeted out that I'm working on this? I haven't. It's just been a personal it's project. Like a it, didn't, it didn't occur to me to tap into my network and say, hey, anybody have a, an easy way to learn this? Like, yeah, I, why didn't I think of that? Or Tony, collaborate. Like I have this idea for this animations and cartoon, cartoons and characters. Let's work together. Like uh, you are the animator that does it, you know, uh, because you do it. Like I'm doing the teaching 24 seven, you do the animation 24 seven. So why don't we do it together? Mm. And in cool. us doing together, you educate me and you show me how you do this thing because, you know, do things, learning by doing, this will be the best way. Mm. As a result mm. of his education, you have a product, like you have a cartoon or whatever you're thinking of. Uh, at mm -hmm. the same time, you have you, like the, the best workshop because you're working on your own stuff with this person. Uh, you know, so that's yeah. that's the way to do it, maybe. That's that's right on, man. Right on. Yeah. Another thing, like a little uh, thing that I'm thinking here in terms of animation, because I'm also really excited about now filmmaking, storytelling, animation. The metaverse thing is right here. There, we can create, and there are a lot of uh, platforms already that allow you to create any character for yourself mm -hmm. that then you will be able to take to any kinds of uh, metaverse different, platform, different being platforms, yeah. Roblox or uh, Oculus 2, uh, and mm -hmm. they have completely different environments. Some of them are animated. So how about taking, yeah. like mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. yourself, character going into metaverse recording the screen so that you kind of act in your own animation you know and you tell That's the hot. story yeah. Hot, man. yeah i don't even need character animator i could do it in a different way i that, yeah that and that that's the main thing with character animator is I want it, it, it launches your webcam and then you can move around but there's already other tools mm. that could do that that could be recorded yeah. so and, and, and those tools are just yeah. going to get better and faster and cheaper, I, I imagine. Yeah, I, I you've heard from my stories. I tend to do things the hard way, and then a few years later, it's a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the story of our lives, you know? Like when yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No question. So, 
yeah way to go uh okay wow. guys we need to wrap this yeah. up yeah we do, we we do. A, well we're, yeah, gonna, we're gonna wrap it up with a w because i'm not gonna freestyle my my rhymes about tony so the the rap with the w uh, yeah. the, the the wrap up with the r excuse me will will it's will coming. be a written yeah it won't be off the top of the dome as as they say uh but yeah uh, i'll work on that tony wow so grateful that you took time out today uh to talk to us it was such a amazing conversation really uh and so worthwhile on my end too i am glad i connected with you guys and our yes. conversation is really valuable to me personally so thank you for Woo! that yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah to it us is, this is. this uh we figured that uh the podcast is a great way to connect and to kind of get to know uh you know each other and then of course this is just the first step we circle mm -hmm. back with uh, all the follow-ups mm -hmm. and ideas and things that we want to, you know, and can create together. And also with uh, some interesting people that it makes sense to connect uh, mm -hmm. with, you know. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of, that's the whole point. So uh, let's do it. I'm so let's happy keep that. It, keep it moving, that keep it moving. We all feel this yeah. resonance. I, I feel like we're like, that's how it feels. We're like, oh, human, like, yeah. uh, where were you? <laughs> it's so cool to be together and to think together. <laughs> Yes, and I totally didn't know anything about your company or your shirt, but it connects directly with yeah. everything in my being and <laughs> everything I've done in my work. So that's uh, yeah. it's just so fun to see. Awesome. Yeah, and, and shout out, shout out to SST uh, Sally Sanchez Taro, uh, BKA Shell Terrell. Uh, you know, she she's the one that connected us, and I had no doubt in my mind when she gave me her little short list, and I started looking at looking at what you're doing i was like okay i get it <laughs> i get that's why she told us to talk to this guy <laughs> awesome she, she is amazing i've met her in person exactly once but i've known her I never have. I've, I've been in i've been in contact <laughs> with her you know not not all the time but you know pretty pretty consistently uh for about 67 years yeah i've never met her in person one of these days watch well, out shelly we're coming to you <laughs> we're coming, we're coming. <laughs> together IRL <laughs> Shell Terrell. It's ha it's gonna happen. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, friends. Uh, it All was right. a pleasure. Yeah, let's keep thanks, them guys. coming. <laughs> yeah, and thanks everybody for tuning in to Learning with Boom and Fluency. Mr. Tony Vincent, have yourself a great rest of the day. And um, yeah, we'll see you all soon on the next program. Yeah. Peace, respect, peace, salute. Stay curious. <laughs> all right, bye guys.